what the heck does it mean to be serverless? <laughs> Let's find out. What do you mean serverless? Well, serverless at a very high level means exactly what it sounds like, which is that you don't have to manage any servers. There's no servers that you have to worry about for doing this particular task. But I think we can do better than that. EC2, as we know, is about virtual machines. It's under compute services, so we're getting more computing power. But we also call them virtual servers. And for good reason, because we are accessing another server, but virtually, all right? They're also called virtual machines, virtual computers. They're, they're all the same thing. Now, what if we could get all of that computing power without actually having to manage that server? You might think, well, Amber, you're not managing the server because you're accessing it virtually. Isn't it the whole point that it's so much easier? Yes, but it can get even easier because with EC2 instances, even though we don't have to physically have the server on site and worry about, you know, the actual physical storage of it and maintenance of it, there's still some overhead that we have to do. We have to handle scaling. We have to handle patching. We have to handle making sure that it's always going to be available. We have to look at load balancing. We have to look at auto scaling. It's definitely not as much work as having our own on-premise server. It's kind of like the next step better, but there's an even better step, an even lot more lightweight way that we can do this. And now you might be thinking, well, Amber, I know what that new lightweight way is. It's containers. We talked about containers pretty recently where we were saying, well, instead of having your whole EC2 instance, which needs the operating system, then you can actually use a container, which is even lightweight, because you're just including everything in this little package that you need to run your application. And then it's going to share the operating system, which is used from the host. So that's even more lightweight than an EC2 instance. But just do wait, because there's an even better one. Well, I shouldn't say that it's better. But it's just a bit more hands-free. Obviously, it depends on what your situation is. But we can go into serverless and the different tools that are involved in serverless now. Now, just to be clear, serverless doesn't mean that there's no servers involved at all. There are still servers involved, but you just don't have to manage them or configure them or worry about them in any way. In fact, you can't even see the underlying infrastructure that's going on underneath your application. As always, AWS offers a lot of different services for this, but the iconic one is AWS Lambda. So let's understand how it works. With AWS Lambda, step one is to upload your code into what's called a Lambda function. This is basically just a nice place where we're going to store the code that we want to run because then we need to set a trigger, which is basically going to tell the function, hey, when this happens, make sure you run this code. So we need to set that up, the trigger, and then when the trigger is detected, the code's going to. So that's pretty much how it works. It's, it's very simple. You've got your code, which you need to provide and write. Then you have the trigger, which is when you want this code to run. And then when that trigger happens, the code's going to run. So an example of this is say you have a whole bunch of images and you're constantly uploading them into S3, which is a storage in AWS. Well, they might all come in at all these wildly different sizes, which can be very, very annoying. So you might have a Lambda function, which is going to automatically resize every image that you upload to make sure that they're all the same and they're consistent and they're not going to be too big or too small and you can use them in your website or whatever it is you want to do. So for that, you don't want to have to deal with any of the virtual servers or anything like that. You just need this code to run. So you would set your code for resizing all of this you would set the trigger as when a new file or photo is uploaded into your S3 bucket and then off it goes, resizing all your photos automatically. Lambda is designed for running code in under 15 minutes. So this is not like a super heavy duty process. It's designed to be very lightweight. When you're using Lambda cost-wise, you're only paying for the time that it actually runs. So in our previous example with the images, you're only going to pay for when that code is actually running and resizing your images. Any time it doesn't need to resize images, you're not going to get charged for it. The next tool that we need to talk about is Fargate. AWS Fargate we can use for containers. Now it works with both our Elastic Container Service and our Elastic Kubernetes Service. So whether you're using Docker or Kubernetes, doesn't matter. This is still going to be useful. And it's going to help to manage all of the resources that go into those containers and actually scaling them out and scaling them up or down based on the number of active users. 
So the first thing that you need to do for this is to actually define your containers and how much processing power you want them to be using. You do all of this within your individual container service. So Elastic Container Service or the Elastic Kubernetes Service. Just make sure that your containers are all set up, that everything's ready to go. Then you create your cluster, which is about telling your containers where they're actually going to run. The cluster might span across multiple different availability zones so that if one of them goes down, it's still going to be okay. The whole thing is still going to run. Your launch tasks are tasks that come from you when you set up your containers in task one. So this is about actually how do you set up your containers? What do you want them to do? Where do you want them to run? How much computing power do you want them to use? All of those things that you set up when you create your containers and set them up. And this one, you're actually kind of calling on those different features and those different tasks and you're saying all right we're ready to go this is what we want to do all hands on deck we're about to take this off the ground and then it's over to Fargate and Fargate is actually going to handle the managing and the deploying of all of these containers it takes care of the scaling the load balancing and the monitoring for you you can of course additionally monitor your containers using CloudWatch and set up your own auto scaling policies but Fargate is going to do a really good job of managing all of your different containers and where they're going. Now, why it's serverless is because it's abstracting out all of the infrastructure layer so that you don't have to worry. You're just focusing almost entirely on your containers, the workloads and the applications that are within those containers. Fargate is dealing with the operational overhead of actually managing all of those individual servers. If you want to give this a go, then I would recommend that you start with you know, creating an EC2 instance and then build it up from there. And this is kind of at the, the other end of things where you're trying to automate as much as you can and take as much off your hands as possible. Happy learning. We'll see you in the next video.